morning, everyone. Welcome to the Tablelands Regional Council Ordinary Meeting for December. Could I remind everyone to turn their devices off or on silent, please? Um, the other thing I'll flag before we get started is we'll be awarding our Christmas lights um, presentation uh, this morning. Uh, we'll be doing that about 10 o'clock, so we'll we'll break break this meeting at about 10 to 10. Do we have any apologies? No. Thank you. Could I ask everyone to be upstanding, please? I'd like to acknowledge the traditional owners of the land that we meet on today and pay respect to elders past, present and emerging. Also, while we're standing, we'll observe a minute's silence as a mark of respect for the members of our community who have recently passed. We wish their family and friends peace and comfort during this challenging time. Thank you. Okay, uh, item number six, declarations of any material personal interest, conflicts of interest by councillors or senior officers. Uh, Councillor Clifton. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Have a prescribed conflict of interest, interest in relation to item 11.2, Tricrops and Price Limited, in that my son's um, planning firm is or is about to be engaged by that company. Very good. And I will leave with it. Very good. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Bilney? Um, yes, I have a prescribed conflict of interest in item 12.2 being the uh, register of pre-qualified suppliers, occasional plant hire, due to my relationship with Bronson Jusu, who is my stepson and owner operator of BJS Plumbing and Civil Contracting and is listed on the register, proposed register, therefore intend to leave the meeting whilst the matter is discussed and voted upon. Thanks, Councillor Bilney. Councillor Hoden. Um, I have this a prescribed conflict of interest in item 12.2, registered pre-qualified suppliers, occasional planning hire. My son, Earl Fitzgerald, is registered to be on the pre-qualified suppliers list and I'll be leaving the meeting during and, and during any discussions and voting on this item. Thank you. Any more conflicts? Thank you. We'll go through the confirmation of the minutes of our November Ordinary Council meeting. Um, do we have a mover of the November minutes? Um, Councillor, Councillor Wiltz is moving the minutes. Do we have a seconder? Councillor Bilney. Um, we'll deal with uh, business arising shortly. Those, those in favour of the minutes, adopting the minutes. Thank you. Okay. Um, business arising from those minutes of November. We have here Councillor Hodge requested information on what forms the debtors amount. No, that's the other one. 
Oh, that's that's the one we need. Yeah, we're doing the one. Yeah, that's what we're doing. Oh, okay. Have you had a response to that cancellation? Oh, shit, shit now. There is a printout on the end. Oh, well, I'm just through, through the CEO, I suppose. I assume, assume that we're working on those, those issues. That'd be great. Uh, the second one is Councillor Clifton requested clarification regarding the amount paid to logo appointments. Uh, there is something there I can't quite read. Councillor Clifton, have you had a response to that? Thanks, Mr. Mayor. I haven't had a response. Of my queries have been answered. Thank you. Thank you. Any additional comment there, Mr. Mayor? We're, yeah. we're pushing ahead with the, to get those um, permanent appointments made as soon as we can. Very good. Thank you. Uh, is there one more there? Uh, no. No. Uh, just, just a yeah. comment, Mr. Mayor. There was a request for a report in relation to the rezoning part of this. I haven't had time to do that at this point in time. Short, uh, short interval between the meetings, so that'll come to the January meeting. But potentially, could, uh, as is a planning related matter, we could potentially provide the planning committee to, to bring that forward. Very good. Thank you. Are there any other matters arising from the November Ordinary Council meeting minutes? No, thank you. Um, those in favour? We did this, didn't we? Sorry. Um, we'll go to the planning committee meeting of the 8th of December. Um, can I have a mover? of those minutes of the 8th of December. Councillor Kaji is moving and Councillor Wilts is seconding. Uh, those in favour of adopting those minutes? Carried, thank you. Um, any matters arising from the planning, planning meeting of last week? No? Thank you. Item 11.1. Samuel Wright, um, care of you and I town plan, material change of use, place of worship and caretakers accommodation. 43 Robert Street, Ashton. Um, can I have a mover to open this report for discussion? So Councillor Wilts is moving to open the report for discussion and the second. Councillor Hayden is seconding, seconding that. Uh, those in favour? Carried. Thank you. We'll go to you, Councillor Wilts. Yes. Thanks. Through the Chair. Um, thanks very much for the, the preparation of a very comprehensive report. Um, I, when I first saw this, I had some grave concerns about the location, um, in particular the um, pedestrian flow that would result um, from the application should it be successful. Um, in particular, um, I made an assumption that um, vehicle and traffic would be using the parking area adjacent to the pool and it would create a dangerous or could create a dangerous hazard for pedestrian traffic to come from there across to the church. Um, the application itself, however, um, creates a um, situation where the car parking for patrons to the church would be at the rear in Evan Street. I uh, believe there's parking 15 or designated 15. 19. Sorry? 19. 19. Thanks, Dan. Um, <clears throat> I have spoken to the applicant. I think he's he's contacted most councillors, um, but I spoke to him only as late again this morning just to seek um, clarification regarding numbers that um, he's anticipating. Um, on average, over the last six years, he's had around about 40 people in his congregation. 
and has only been on average between 10 and 12 cars. Um, they have um, signage that they're going to, um, it, should they be successful, mount on the front of their building to indicate where the safe parking area will be. Um, yeah, so I, um, my concerns over the, the traffic matters and, and pedestrian um, hazard have well and truly been removed. Um, so at this point in time, I'm um, more than happy with the application to proceed. Thanks, Councillor Lewis. Um, let's just go, Councillor Hayden. Would you like to talk? Oh yeah, on um, page eleven, and it's only a minor issue. On page eleven, uh, three point nine noise nuisance. So it's got between seven a.m. and ten p.m. When you go to the website, they don't go till ten p.m. So I was wondering if we could actually reduce those times to still control, to be able to control the noise if you're a neighbour. Yeah, asking the question, Councillor. Yeah, sure. uh, yeah, would would you like to? Uh, through the chair, certainly uh, council can amend the noise condition in any way it sees fit to try and limit um, the impacts. Uh, the 10 p.m. is just the standard uh, noise times that are normally applied to a premises through a range of different uh, legislative requirements for noise. So it's normally after 10 p.m. when a lot of the noise restrictions kick in, hence that timing. But certainly council is well within its rights to impose any conditions that it likes in a development approval in terms of noise. Thanks very much. We'll go Councillor Cardew, then Councillor Billman. Huh? Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Um, I, uh, I also, um, what I want to do is I want to put up a, a alternate motion to include um, uh, items F, G and H uh, in, the, in the noise nuisance section of that report. Uh, the first one, item F, addresses what Councillor Hayden just, uh, just spoke about. The second one, um, item G, with the um, with the parking, um, uh, yeah, with 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 regards to outdoor activities. So um, there was there was two submitters um, who lodged submissions against this application. One of the submitters is um, uh, main main issue was stormwater. The other was noise. I believe the stormwater will be mitigated. The stormwater issues will be mitigated as there's no there's no new buildings being being proposed to be constructed on the site. So there's no, the existing hard standing um, parking area, albeit that there is gravel at the moment. It is a hard surface and water just sheds off it. There's no absorption of water. So there won't be any worsening effect <coughs> of stormwater on the site with regard to this development application. The, the next one is um, in, in uh, item H there uh, regards uh, noise. Um, one of the submitters um, owns a, a residential property right next door. Um, although it's not, not being used for residential purposes at the minute, it has the potential to be used. Not only that, there is residential property surrounding um, this proposed site. So noise, mitigation of noise to me, um, if we can mitigate that noise, um, that will take away or, or reduce the impact to those surrounding residences. So what I'm proposing there is um, to have some uh, soundproofing measures put in place during their um, renovations or fit out processes that they're going to undertake to create the auditorium. Um, and they're going to have to do modifications to the building, retrofit the building. So while they're doing that, they can put some soundproofing measures in place to mitigate um, the noise that may generate out of that, uh, of that space. So. I'll be putting up a, an alternate motion to include those three extra items there. Yeah, well, th thanks, Councillor Cartu. We'll, and just clarification, this this will actually be an amendment to the officer's recommendation because the office recommendations okay. support it, so yeah. it's it's an amendment. So, so um, Councillor Billing, yep. through the chair, look, I, the report is very expansive, and I I support what the officers have done. Um, 
Uh, I also uh, spoke to the proponent and can, I can confirm what uh, Councillor Wilkes is saying it is the congr congregation consists of generally about 40 people. It's been like that for the last six years. There's no real growth in it uh, and the splits 50-50 with adults and kids. Um, so and the, the cars also 10 to 12, so I don't th feel that there'll be any undue spillage out onto Evans Street that should be contained within the premises. Um, I support what um, Councillor Cardew is proposing. I've just had a thought how we deal with special events such as Christmas Eve, where they may want to celebrate at 12 o'clock like other churches do. Is there special dispensation that can be given for that sort of thing? Or I mean, even if it was at 10 p.m. cut off, they'd still have to apply. I imagine, is that how it works? Uh, through the Chair, if there's the intent to facilitate um, special events like a midnight service for Easter or Christmas, um, potentially you could amend the amended item F there to say, unless otherwise improve, approved in writing by council. That gives them the opportunity to directly come to council and say, this is the event we're hosting, this is how many people, this is what we'll be doing. Um, and council can give them a letter saying we confirm that we accept that these are the things that you must do. Without that, technically they have to come in and amend the decision if they wanted to do that. So that just gives you that tiny bit of flexibility for those one-off events. Mm. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. Yeah. And that, is that those words uh, meet that? I would probably just add in writing, yeah. just yeah. because. Yes. Yeah. That's Dan's just made the point too. Um, it might be worth putting it with, you know, 24 hours prior written notice or something like that, or seven days prior written notice or something, just so that we're not getting so a letter that time, morning. Got, got time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And and also during my discussions with um, with uh, these applicants, they they don't hold any unusual events at present. Those special events. Um, that's not to say that they won't down the track. Um, but I said, well, how will you mitigate uh, with, your, with your neighbourhood? And he would um, suggest that he's going to uh, talk with his neighbours if there's an event they're going to have out of common courtesy. So I think I think you'll find that they propose to to assimilate with the neighbourhood as best they can. Great. Just, just one question. <coughs> um, should 3.9a be amended for consistency with uh, it's not necessary. Through the chair, I, I don't think it's particularly necessary because there may be some activities that fall outside the the, um, the services and whatnot that they could conduct beyond those uh, 8 p.m. deadline. Thank you, <coughs> Councillor Clifton. <coughs> um, well, I'm very much generally in support of this proposal. Except, I think we need to have a bit of a think about um, Councillor Cardew's amendment G, clause G. If there are 50% of the, of the congregation as kids, does that mean that they won't be able to play outside? Um, um, if they want to have a barbecue, does that mean they won't be able to have a barbecue outside? And bearing in mind as well, as I understand, this, these premises are not only a church, but also a private residence for the pastor. If he wants to have a barbecue outside and kids run around, I, I think my feeling is that uh, in this situation, um, we have to assume that people are reasonable, people are responsible, and people are neighbourly. And so I don't think um, I don't think that, I don't agree with the clause G. I think we, we're seeking to interfere, interfere in a person, a family's private life um, because they live there um, and their ability to entertain their own friends who will be in the congregation, I guess. So I would like to see that one struck out. I think it goes just too far. Okay, so I respond, yeah. Look, um, take those comments on board, uh, though. Um, this relates to the church, not the private residence. 
say, if the, if the, if the household above, or the pastor or whoever's living in the household above, wants to have a barbecue or anything outside, the car parks won't be in use. It'd just be a family gathering the same as any other normal family would have. No problem. But this is relates to the actual activities of the of the church or the, or the congregation. So, and if they were to have an outdoor activity, if you look on the if you look on your 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 um, site plan there that's been provided in the report, the outdoor space is wholly taken up by car parking. So if they were to do an outdoor activity somewhere in an open space where the car, you would be have you would have to utilise the car parking space, which would be inconsistent with the agreement. It doesn't relate. So this relates to the church service designed, not to the activities of the private residence above. If the private residence above wants to have an outdoor activity, a barbecue or the like, you're more than you know, they can utilise the outdoor space where the car park because there won't be a congregation as such for the church activity. That's the way I would look at it. Uh, we'll go Councillor uh, Wilts and then Councillor Hodge. Yeah, thanks. Yes, through the chair, um, yeah, I, I have to disagree with um, paragraph G, um, condition G also. Um, kids will be kids and um, no doubt there'll be birthday parties and things like that from, from the congregation as they do in, in small church groups. Um, and shifting a couple of cars out onto the street or if there only happens to be five cars there. Um, so I, I do think we're, we're trying to over-regulate um, the conditions that are imposed on this. Um, with respect to soundproofing as well, again it comes down to, and Councillor Clifton made mention of it, like people's own ability to, to see common sense and to use that common sense. Like we're not we're not talking about a massive auditorium here, um, and we've only had one submission that is concerned about the noise, and it's not even a person that lives there. Um, the community at large haven't put in any submissions whatsoever, whether they correct or not, against the noise or against the, the proposal. So I, again, I'll, I'll say it, I, I think we're just trying to over-regulate the conditions that are, we're trying to impose here. Councillor Hodge. Thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. Um, well, the first point I'd like to make uh, is that um, I have got a problem with this, this uh, application, but, um, but I can see um, that uh, it's getting support. So, but I'd just like to make the points that um, I don't think this is the right place for church. And Atherton is a different town to what it was in the early 1950s and 60s. Um, the traffic on Robert Street would be a hundred times greater than what it was when those other churches were built. And of course, a lot of the other churches had a bit more open space in that to be able to, to use there for their activities. But saying that, um, and, I'm, and I can see that, that, you know, everyone wants to support this, I think. So I, I'm not going to try and make, um, bring out planning points or anything like that um, if I was to make a move, a move to, to refuse it. So the, the strategic frameworks and those points. But councillors, if you're going to approve this, um, make it reasonable. Don't make it hard for everyone. And I think this is just going too, too hard. And, and I think the the officers have made the conditions perfectly on on the intent of what they've done. Even though I probably disagree with some of the planning points, but I think if you're going to approve this, just prove it on the officers' recommendations and make make it make it fair for the people concerned. So I'll just leave it there. Very good. Thanks, Councillor Hodge. Thank you. Um, so Councillor Cardew has moved an amendment to the officer's recommendation. The amendment's up on the screen there. Councillor Cardew, are you still happy with that amendment or, or um, would you be willing to, because there, there is an appetite in the room, perhaps reducing the, the number of conditions you've added there. Um, um, thanks, Mayor. Um, 
no, I'm happy with it. I believe that we need to have some controls in place. There's no good saying that yeah, they can do this and or they, they might not do this or they might do this. This is putting clear guidelines in place to ensure that we protect the surrounding, the amenity of the surrounding residents. It's no good coming back later and then having to go into legal battles and costly, it's going to cost us a, you know, a trillion dollars in, in, uh, in legal fees and and, and council officers' time trying to regulate something that we could have easily have mitigated at this point in time. So I'm 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 going to uh, continue on with my motion and see what sort of sort of we get. Um, do we have a seconder for Councillor Kaju's amendment amendment to the to the officer's recommendation? Uh, Councillor Bilney seconding. Um, final call, councillors. Uh, are we voting two on the amendment? Uh, we're voting on motion. The, the amended motion. We're voting on the amended motion. This is just, just it's not really an amended motion. It's just, it's just voting on the um, the motion, in, incorporating the suggested amendments to the yes. officer's um, recommendation, as opposed to an amended motion. It's just a small distinction. Yes, um, point of order. Yes, but if I may, see, if the if this motion is lost, um, if this motion is lost with those amendments, is it possible to re-engage with the original officer's motion? Yes. So we're not voting on just point of order. We're not voting on the amendment because that's exactly what I thought Councillor Kaji did. He, am he amended the resolution. He did. So that's the, the motion before Council is the officer's recommendation <coughs> plus the three, court, three clauses that have been amended. With the amendments? Yeah. Okay. But it's not an amendment to a motion because there's no motion in front of Council. That's all. Uh, we have a mover and seconder, Councillor Kaju, seconded Councillor Bilney. Um, those in favour? Okay, that's that's defeated. Um, just record that. I'd like to move a motion, Mr. Mayor. We'll go to Councillor Question. I'd like to move a motion that is parallel to the one that was just lost, minus clause G. Bring those clauses up. Can I just uh, copy this forward? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. I'll get rid of that. Yeah, you I'd like to make that my I just want to do a clarification when you were talking about H about soundproofing the whole thing at the hospital. Does that mean if the air conditioning went out, they wouldn't be able to open windows or anything like that? So Councillor Clifton is moving um, the amendments in, in, in yellow there to the what was the officer's recommendation. 
So do we have a seconder for Councillor Clifton's uh, amendments? Councillor Cardew, seconding those. Those in favour? Um, would the councillors like those recorded? Point two, try props proprietary limited minor change of development approval. Um, yes, establishing development rights in accordance with the industrial planning area of the Atherton Planning Scheme 2002, uh, Lot 100, Manfi Road, Tolga. Um, do I have a move up the officer's recommendation? Councillor Hodge is moving. Councillor Cardew seconding. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hodge. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Uh, this is a minor amendment, but I'd like to just go to our offices just to explain that um, there's no disadvantage really to the applicant. There's no disadvantage to the to ICS. Just one question. Okay, so through the chair. Basically, uh, so the developer of the Atherton Business and Industry Park is asking for council to rescind the infrastructure agreement over his land that was entered into almost 10 years ago. Um, it's now been superseded. It, it, it dealt with some water and sewerage road um, infrastructure works, but um, by and large, those works have been delivered to date. Uh, and the only remaining part or the remaining clauses of that infrastructure agreement that remain current are in regards to charging. And at the moment, the developer is actually locked into the old Atherton Shire infrastructure charging regime for industrial reconfiguration of a lot that was on a per area, per square metre basis as was built into the infrastructure agreement. So basically to do a boundary alignment. So the, the developer actually has a boundary realignment application in with council at the moment. He has to pay a headworks charge on that boundary realignment of approximately $18 per square metre of additional land. So the difference between that infrastructure agreement in, in terms of charging and the current AICR is um, the AICR actually charges per title. So if he was to do his boundary realignment under the current AICR, he wouldn't have to pay any headworks charges. And the reason that the uh, developer would like to rescind the infrastructure agreement is basically he has the potential to do, I'd say about 10 boundary realignments with the properties in the existing industrial estate to the north. So there's a real um, advantage for him in that regard. He doesn't have to build that additional infrastructure charge into the price of the land when he's selling it. And there's no disadvantage for council because basically if, he, if the developer was to pay that infrastructure charge now, depending on what gross floor area is built on that block by the purchaser, um, there may be a credit, an outstanding credit against the land that could well never be utilised. Okay. So I think this just through the chair simplifies everything and brings them in line with the current charging regime. And it's fair to everyone across the whole board. Yeah. 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 Next door's building land there. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Thank you. All right. Um, any, any more questions on this one, councillors? Okay. Uh, those in favour? Gary, thank you. Right. Yeah, thank you.
Item 11.3, um, infrastructure charges, commercial bulk goods policy. Uh, do I have a mover of the officer's recommendation, Councillor Cardew, and a seconder, Councillor Bilney? Um, Councillor Cardew. Yeah, thank you. Ken. I don't have a problem with this. I think it's a great incentive. Um, well done to the planners for bringing this to the table. Um, there's been some talk about um, you know, if we lock this in, what will it affect if, you know, the developers with regards to infrastructure charges? Well, this is just a this is just a, um, a notice, if you, if you like, to developers to say if you're going to build on a on a, on a four thousand square metre um, building on, on an industrial lot in that precinct, then the infrastructure charges are going to be capped at five hundred twenty thousand. There's still if the developer is not happy with that, there's still an opportunity to enter into an infrastructure agreement with council, regardless. So this is just something that will be in our, in our planning scheme to, to use as a tool for potential developers to look at it and say, OK, well, if we're going to develop in the, in the TRC and do something of this nature, this is potentially what the infrastructure charges are going to be. But this still doesn't take away their right to enter into an infrastructure agreement. So, I think it's I think it's good because if you don't have something like this there with the current infrastructure charges, you know, something of this nature could infrastructure charges could be calculated over a million dollars, you know, and uh, that may just be enough to, you know, get a developer to look elsewhere where the infrastructure charges aren't so high on the scheme of things. So I support it 100%. Fantastic. Thanks, Thanks Councillor Card too. Um, Councillor Hodge. Yeah, I don't. Um, I think this is um, this is premature, and um, and basically, I, I'm not sure about the government. But um, first of all, I understand um, this basically TRC wide. But you, you you exactly said what you just said. Uh, Councillor Kaji was a, a precinct, and, and you're exactly right. That's what it's all about. Except that precinct. Okay. Now, what we have, what we have, and this is where I think the funding side of it is wrong, and why it's just a bit premature. I, I have no problem with incentive programs at all, but, but we have an RAL now that's out for, I think it's um, uh, information request, I think that's what it's called, uh, in regards to the one into eight. Now, once, once that information request is completed, right, then it goes into public notification, right? Where the, everyone then has the right to um, put a submission in in regards to this because there is zone rule at the moment. So, and then, and what, what, what the, basically what you're doing, you're saying, oh, we, we, we haven't even, the council hasn't even assessed this yet, and we haven't even made a decision. But what we're saying is around the back, hey, well, this is what the infrastructure charge is going to be. On anything from 4.4 thousand square meters, and of course the 4,000 4,000 square meters is what um, 400 meters by 10, right? And there's and 6,700 and 8,000 square meters. You can, you can see where they're going. Uh, you know, 8,000. That's 8, 800 or 800 meters by 10. Now, but the point I'm going is that we haven't we haven't we've not assessed this yet. So I think in the governance side of it, I, I don't think it's right. And, and what it should be doing, it should be part of the LAP that we've just promoted, right? That's at the uh, local area plan. And then that can become part of that. And then it all comes back to council, all above board. And so that's that's my point. And it, it should be deferred. It should be go part of that and come back. Until until we assess that RAL. That's my point. Just just a small problem. Public policy sounds completely above board, Councillor. Uh, Councillor yeah. Clifton. Um, yeah, it is public policy and completely above board. Um, and the, and everything about it is open. Um, just, I have the same unease with the timing. 
I would prefer the RAL to be decided, clear and done, before we impose a policy framework. Because you, at the moment, we're, we're the, the, the rapid growth in um, planning applications and development applications of, of the Table Land Regional Council is, as in a sense, from my perspective, of course, a bit short-footed. Um, we would have had these things in place. We should have them in place. But suddenly, in the midst of a major uh, one and eight, um, major um, development applications in there now that's in the process of being assessed that hasn't been put out for final public comment. There may be other people who who have perceptions about about it. And I, I would like to see them. I'd very much like to see this done, but I'd like to see it the RAL for the one eight be finalised first. Thanks, Councillor Pilton. Uh, councillors, Councillor Building. Yeah, through the chair, I also uh, applaud this this policy. I think it's it's uh, it, it demonstrates that we are open for business. Um, you know, we may forego a bit of infrastructure charge uh, in the meantime, but the improved overall economic development benefits. Uh, I think will far outweigh that. So I, I, I do support it. I'm a little bit um, unsure on page 190, it actually talks about the term of the policy from 1st of July 2022. I suspect that um, we can't do it retrospectively and it should be 1st of January. No, through the chair, it was intentionally uh, the 1st of July 22 to avoid a circumstance where potentially there's an existing approval. Um, so it allows basically existing development approval and it was also designed to align with the timing of your current incentives policy. So to have them on a consistent time frame. Um, if you made it one January 2023, it's not going to be a huge issue, but I just deliberately aligned it with your current start date. Thank you. Thank you. In the summary, I'll be doing that to be one January 2023 so that it wasn't retrospective. Oh, okay. My apologies. <laughs> My apologies, Executive Manager. My, um, I work at my internal communication skills. Through um, the chair, either way. <laughs> yeah, but I do admit that in both places too. Uh, so I just uh, uh, a bit of point of clarification on page 193 of the actual policy rather than the principles of what we're doing. Um, if we, if the policy talks about a local supplier and also talks about <coughs> Um, uh, employing per persons who are residents or ratepayers, which solely or primarily employs persons who are residents or ratepayers within the TRC. And I'm wondering whether, bearing in mind the national and international world we live in, you can imagine a, that a corporation <coughs> might want to move in and, and, and employ people from elsewhere, uh, some of them anyway. I'm wondering. I'm just a bit confused. I, I think it's a bit restrictive. I, I agree with the spirit of it, but I feel it's a bit restrictive. So through the chair, um, it, it's described as giving preference to the local workforce and contractors. It doesn't mean that in order to qualify for the incentive, they must engage only local workforce. Um, the intent of putting these in the policy, in my view, is to encourage uh, particularly national developers to engage subcontractors locally within the region. Um, what we've found very beneficial in the past is even if the head contractor is a national entity because they've got the scale and the resources to be able to construct something, it's a really good opportunity to engage local subcontractors to upskill local subcontractors so that they've got the capacity to bid as subcontractors on these larger projects going forward. So it, the intent of this is to encourage uh, developers to use the local skill set that's available. It doesn't preclude them from qualifying if they have a national head contractor. Very good. Okay, then thanks for the clarification. Uh, Councillors, um, Kelly, is there anything you'd like to add before we wrap this, wrap this uh, up? Through the chair, just probably a public? point of clarification. Um, the intent of this policy is to apply the entire Tablelands Regional Council area. 
um, whilst I accept that the majority of interest from large floor plate retailers has been in the Atherton industry and business park, it is decoupled from the current application that is before council for the one into eight and the variation request. Um, whilst I've got no concerns whether council elects to endorse it today or defers it as part of the local area plan, I just wanted to make that very clear for the public record that this policy is region wide. It's not specifically linked to that development. Very good, thank you. Okay, councillors, we have a mover and a seconder of the officer's recommendation. Those in favour? Carried. Um, councillors, would you like them recorded? Yes. Councillor Fletcher? Yes. The count would that be not four three? Uh, uh, five, um, five two. Five two. Yeah, five, 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 two. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Councillors, we might just do one more before we break from the MET. The next one. Yeah. Any agenda items? This one should be quick. Uh, Eleven point four. Change to the ordinary meeting to January 2023. So what's happened, Council, is we have our ordinary council meeting on the fourth Thursday of each month. In January, the fourth Thursday is Australia Day, which is a public holiday. So this report is uh, suggest is, is proposing that we move our ordinary council meeting from Thursday the 26th to Wednesday the 25th to one day earlier, just to avoid that public holiday. Um, do I have a move of the officer's recommendation? Councillor Wilkes and a seconder. Councillor Tardew. Um, those in favour? Carried, thank you. Uh, we'll, we'll take a break for morning tea, everyone, just in case uh, we get into an agenda item that holds us up. We'll do the Christmas lights at uh, 10, 10 a.m. Okay, um, we'll reconvene now. So we'll go on to um, item 12.1, Extension Provision Management Services Lakeside Caravan Park. Um, could we have a mover of the officer's recommendation? Councillor Clifton moving, Councillor Hodge seconding. Um, Council Clifton. Uh, no. Um, perhaps uh, the officer would like to make a small presentation. Yeah, over to you, Shane. Thank you. Um, through the chair, this is um, the extension of management services for the Lakeside Caravan Park. So the current caretakers there have been working within the uh, contract obligation effectively and efficiently. So whilst we are still in the design phase of the upgrade of sewage for Tinnevaro Peninsula, this is the extension to continue that caravan park service. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor yeah, um, Shane, there's the um, there's the revenue cover in the operational costs. Through the chair, yes. Why? Do you have the figures with you? Or? I do not. And the revenue covers the expenses for the contract? At current, yes. I can provide further if you would like. Am I noted? Yeah. Uh, cancel, please. Just thanks, Mr. Lynn. Um, I don't know whether the revenue is covering it, but I do notice that the, because I go up and down there all the time and around that area. Um, there's been the, the move to, re, to take the permanent residents out has made a significant difference to the number of, to the usage of the park. It's almost observedly doubled in capacity. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. Um, councillors, any more questions on this one? 
Those in favour of the officer's recommendation? Carried. Um, Councillor Carter, would you like to So that was uh, Councillor Carter against Jackie. Can you that? Um, item 12.2. Thanks, Councillor Hayden. Councillor Bilney leaving the room. Item 12.2. Register of pre qualified suppliers, occasional plant hire. Do I have a mover of the officer's recommendation? Councillor Hodge and Councillor Wilkes. Um, Councillor Hodge. Yeah, one thing straightforward. <coughs> Uh, any any questions? Discussion? Anything you, you'd like to add here, Shane? No? No. Okay. Those in favour of the officer's recommendation? Carried. Thank you. Disaster relief funding arrangements, project management variation. Have a mover of the officer's recommendation. Councillor Hodge and Councillor Bilney. Councillor Hodge. Yeah, thanks very much. Uh, no, I, there's no questions from me. Um, like the other day, we were advised that um, these extra costs are, are covered by the, uh, by the government, so I'm um, following that. Councillors, final call. Those in favour of the officer's recommendation? Carried, thank you. Item 12.4, capital, capital budget reallocation, water and sewerage projects. Do I have a mover? Councillor Cardew is moving. And a seconder, Councillor Wilkes. Councillor Cardew. Councillor, any, any, any questions? Um, just one, thanks. Yes. Um, just to go to Bruce. Uh, we got you all the way here. I think we need to ask you a question. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Athens Sewage Upgrade. Um, that's, just, that's just standard. Those two projects are just into this budget now. Uh, of the 22-23 budget. Yes, yeah, so the, uh, through the chair, this is the first uh, item there is, is a new project. Um, it's a result of uh, the development pressures that are in Atherton and uh, the need to identify the two upgrades and trunk um, mains to cater for those new developments in the short term. Um, but yeah, we're just basically reallocating funds from uh, the Atherton um, project to the two Atherton projects, so they need each other out. Thank you. Very good. Uh, Councillor Clifton. Thank you. Um, Chris, um, on page 216, Melanda Davies Road Water Supply, do you have, we're bringing it into 22-23, do you have a sort of a notional time frame for that? Uh, through the chair, so this this element that we're talking about here is the uh, detailed design of the interconnection between okay. the Melander and the Davies Road schemes, in, including uh, an additional reservoir that's been identified. Um, the actual capital construction project is currently has come back to council for for approval. It's currently not in the in the budget provisions at this point in time. So that's uh, for the purpose of this project is to inform that uh, that capital construction project to yet to come and yet to be put in front of council. So the expected outcome would be that we'll have a design just as, as part of our three year planning cycle now rather than the one. 
and would you expect it to appear in the following year, 23-24? Uh, yeah, the expectation would be this, this detail is on, we'll be ready to uh, go to, to the next stage in early 2023. Thank you. Councillors, any more questions? Is there anything you wanted to add to that group? No. Very good. Um, those in favour of the officer's recommendation? Carried, thank you. So, item 13.1, uh, finance report, November 2022. Do we have the officer's recommendation? Councillor Bildley's moving. Seconder. Councillor Wilts is second. Councillor Bildley. Through the chair. <coughs> um, I don't have a lot of questions. I just note um, there is um, an amount of 2,737 paid on the 2nd of November as well as 2,742 on the 16th of November. November. I assume that's a timing issue, but it's a it's a monthly payment for Kiritek pools for the servicing of the pool at Mount Garnet. Um, where, where are we at with trying to organise uh, daily use of that pool? Because it seems a substantial um, sum of money if we're not if it's not being used by community. It may not be a question for Erica that one. Yeah. yeah. So, Shane, would you? Um, through the chair, so currently we're working with community engagement, Blake and I, myself, and some of the uh, community members up there in relation to the bronze medallions and also the um, pool safety, WHNF legislation around it, to find out if there is an opportunity to open it to the public, if there is. So would there be an action item Based on the outcome, if that doesn't come to fruition, there's no no use. Will a report then potentially come to council saying, "Well, this is where we stand." You know, how, how, how do we forge a pathway forward? To correct, okay. Yeah, just following on from that, councillor Billney, I think councillor Hayden probably knows a little bit more about the history than, than I do, but I do recall the other night that councillor Hayden said council had trained a number of people, had given people the opportunity mm -hmm. to get their bronze medallions within or around that community, um, which th which we did do. They did get their medallions, but then since, but since then, too. yeah, we understand that the school does use the, use the pool um, at, at different times, but yeah, it's, it's largely uh, extremely underutilised, absolutely. Yeah, thanks, mate. Um, have we ended up any discussions with uh, Education Queensland being in school up there to look at maybe taking it over for their years? We can't get anybody to we might, we're off yeah, the yeah, we might. We're, 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 sorry, Kev, we're, uh, and I, I made that worse. I, I took us a bit off track there. But, uh, we, might, we might discuss that later on. I'll try and keep uh, we'll just keep on this finance report. Uh, do we have any questions for Erica regarding the finance report? No, no discussion? No, I probably look forward to the January meeting when we have six months. All right, those are just like one fleeting comment. I, I note that we're told we're within less than 2% of our, and I think that uh, I commend uh, Eric for, she must be holding everybody on a really tight rein. So. I have a great bunch of managers with me, so <laughs> we are all doing a good job in that space. Very good. Uh, those in favour of the officer's recommendation? <coughs> Carried, thank you. Uh, 13.2, 2021, 2022, report. So I have a mover of the officer's recommendation. Councillor Hodge is moving and a seconder. Uh, Councillor Clifton, uh, Councillor Hodge. 
Uh, that looks like it's great. Um, it's uh, a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty good uh, I think report, unmodified report. Unmodified, which is good. It's <laughs> <laughs> um, so. been on time and, and, and within requirements. Very good, thank you. Uh, any final call on this one, Councillors? Okay, thank you. Those in favour of the officer's recommendation? Carried, thank you. Item 14, uh, notice of motion. Um, do we have a notice of motion? Without oh, business without notice, sorry. Um, do we have notice of motion? No notice of motion. Item 15, business without notice. Councillor Carter. Yeah, thanks, um, yeah, I've got one. Um, it relates to um, uh, driveway accesses. Um, the light coming off a council control road. Um, in recent times we've had um, situations where we've done um, works on our local roads and resulting in um, access issues into the private property. <coughs> so what I'm, what I'm proposing to do is, is put a, a motion up that a report be prepared detailing the legislative framework for the construction and maintenance of driveways, crossovers and access from council control roads into private property and that the report be brought to the February ordinary meeting. So that motion is up on the on the board there. So I'd like to uh, move that motion. Uh, so Councillor Cardew's uh, looking for a seconder for his for his motion up there. Uh, Councillor Clipson second, seconding the motion. Councillors, I'll open it up for discussion. Could I, could I just make a comment? I just had a, a brief conversation during the break uh, with my colleagues. We might just ex expand that report slightly. I don't, don't suggest we need to change the motion, but we have a number of local laws, including the, the um, roads local law that are under review that, will, that does obviously form part of that legislative framework. So we do have a status report. Uh, in relation to the review of that local law, uh, but we will also provide a general update in relation to uh, the progress of the review of local laws more generally. But certainly we'll deal with that separately in the full industry framework. Very good. Uh, councillors? Um, okay, those in favour of the officers of uh, Councillor Cardew's um, motion? Thank you. Um, Councillor Clifton, did you have a, uh, a, a business without notice that you wanted to bring? Good. No. Um, could I just, I, I've had a, a conversation yeah. with Councillor Clifton. I am going to provide a report in relation to uh, inter internal audit and the, um, the internal audit function. The, Terms of reference for internal audit uh, and then make some more general comments on uh, matters that arose during the last internal audit committee meeting. That, that will be provided initially through a workshop environment in January. Uh, and it's entirely up to Councillor Clifton if he wishes to proceed with the, uh, with the matter that you're referring to, Mr. Mayor. But, but I am doing some work in that and I acknowledge that I haven't really prior to very recent times reviewed the terms of reference in relation to internal audit. Um, I've done that now and I have some matters I'd like to raise with Council in relation to that. Not, I'm not suggesting significant matters, but we did have some what you might refer to as operational difficulties. It's a question that used a slightly different word at Smoko, but um, so I'll call them operational difficulties <laughs> uh, during the last internal audit uh, committee meeting and, and just clarity of the pathway of reports and matters like that where we could potentially strengthen the, the, the terms of reference to provide more guidance to staff and the internal auditor around um, the pathway of reports and when they need to be escalated and, and uh, given a, a ranking, you know, some sort of ranking around importance, but they'll be the subject of a future report. This Very good. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so, 
Thank Happy you with that. Yep. 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 yep, very good. Uh, any more business without notice, councillors? Uh, just one more, please. It's just to ask for an update on the um, where we're at with the Miranda Falls Tarrant Park uh, lease. I mean, we're three months almost into the into that period now. So, basically, the question is, um, are we nearly there? You know, are we getting there? So, I'll defer to uh, to Shane. Yeah. You can come up here, Shane, if you Chair, thank you. Um, so, update on the post extension, we met with the tenders um, as advised um, for continued negotiations. Um, since then, we provided them additional information that they've requested with the aim of having a collated submission in January to then again workshop with yourselves with a report to Council by February. No, we, well, we're getting there. Yep. We're getting there. I mean, it has taken a long time, um, but we'll get there. It's probably taken longer than uh, probably Captain, Captain Cook. Uh, <coughs> he took less time to prepare his boat and get back to Batavia, but uh, that's fine. Batavia. Batavia. Java. Java. Okay. I think there's no, any 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 further business without notice. <laughs> All right. Um, there being no further business, that bring, brings an end to our to our meeting today. Our next meeting of council will be Thursday, the twelfth, twelfth of January. Um, very good. I'll call the meeting closed.